So I'm talking today with Associate Professor Brian Cook from the University of Melbourne, who's one of the lead researchers on Activity 3A. Brian, could you start with telling us what is Activity 3A? Yeah, yeah. Activity 3A is in the early phase of the research, the, the kind of fact-finding, getting to know farmers phase. And it is a relational understanding of farmers' lives and the farm. And so it's a little unusual to do this sort of work, but I guess if you think about how you go about knowing a farmer, you can ask them. You can ask them directly and get their perception data, and that's really valuable, but it can also be a little bit, it's dependent on memory, it's dependent on the stories you like to tell about yourself. It's one way of knowing a farmer in their life. You might observe them, you might just kind of watch. You could look at what they do, their practices, and those are all helpful ways of doing it. And then another way of doing it is to take a kind of relational account of the farm and the farmer. And that sort of idea says, there is no us, there is no farm or farmer. It's actually a product of all the relations that produce it. And that kind of sounds a little funny, but it can be really, really helpful to understand what's going on and why if you take this sort of relational account of, in this case, a farm. And so activity three says, let's figure out all the relations that make up these farms for groups of farmers in Northwest Cambodia, so that we can then have a discussion with those farmers about which relations are beneficial, which ones are detrimental, which sort of relations would you like to expand, which ones would you like to cut out? It's a way of trying to deepen and diversify how we know the farmer's life and their livelihood. So hmm. activity 3A says, let's take a relational account to make sense of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of relations that make up the farm. And what phase is activity 3A at at the moment? Yeah, oh, you're at a great time to ask that question because we are about to go into the field basically. So mm. we're doing the final sort of conceptual and methodological discussions right now. So how you find out about these relations is, is quite a difficult and a challenging sort of question. We sometimes describe it as a network or an assemblage. These are all of the factors that weave together and a spider web with the, the, the kind of farm at the center and pulling on it to produce the web and what it does. And so right now we're decided as a team, we want to do this. We want to have a relational understanding of the farm. And now it's about what's the methodological way of getting to know that. And so we've decided, let's use farmers, let's have farmers tell us about the relations that constitute their farm. And so the first part of 3A is to go out with farmers and, and just catalog. What are all the factors that influence your life in positive ways and negative ways? And I think the important thing around relational analyses is that it's open to non-human, to ideas, to environmental, to all these factors and relations that shape things. It's not just the climate and the seeds mm. and the ideas, but it could be someone's understanding of their spirituality or of spirits in the lands or of their history or of economic mm. forces or of their neighbor and the practices mm. that happen there. What we want to do is really open up and say to farmers, what influences you? Like, let's just mm. name them all. And, and my expectation is we'll have several hundred at least account. So we're going to spend the first part just building the list and we're going to keep engaging with different farmers until we can't find any more to add to the list. Mm. And once we have that kind of comprehensive list, we're going to then use it with participating farmers in our analysis to say, let's look at this list and cut out all the ones that aren't appropriate for you or aren't applicable to your circumstances so that we can get a picture of what is and isn't important for these farmers. That will then allow us to subsequently have discussions about some farmers think this particular relation is important. You said it isn't. Why? Or on this map amongst the ones that you don't have, which one would you like? Which one do you think would benefit you the most mm. in terms of economics or in terms of productivity or in terms of your happiness, in terms of your something that's important to you? Mm. And so it's really about giving us a tool to bring to our participating farmers to facilitate a discussion mm. and, and an interrogation of what's important and what isn't. Mm. And I guess thinking down the project even further, 
If the farmer says, oh, I'd really like to build up or strengthen or expand that relationship because our project in activity six has funds to provide direct support, that's beginning to hear from the farmers what they'd mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So a farmer might say, oh, I don't have a relationship with agricultural experts. I, I can't mm -hmm. get expert advice about how to deal with a problem of uh, maybe let's pest and disease or whatever it is, mm. that by them expressing that, the project takes note of that and can say, oh, okay, this is a pathway to providing support for that farmer. And so that's the, the overarching purpose of this kind of relational analysis. What have you been learning from the project over the last sort of 12 months that's influencing your, your activity? Yeah. Um, especially from activity two, which is the kind of quantitative survey that Ariane and, and Van have been running. As a result of that massive survey, I think, you know, just under 3,000 participants, we're beginning to see a typology of farmers. Mm -hmm. And that's really helpful because it allows us to then sample and subsample from the census in a way that says this deep relational accounting and analysis that we do at the individual scale ties through our activities all the way potentially to the national scale agricultural survey allowing this project to generalize and extrapolate far beyond mm. its already big sample and I think that's really where I've been learning so activity two has been able to say here are types or groups of farmers according to these characteristics. And we're presently fine tuning that, whether there's seven or five or, or whatnot. And for me, as a qualitative uh, social scientist, the ability for the deep nuanced qualitative narratives and stories is always something that I gravitate towards. But I have to admit, alone, they can be dismissed. They'd be like, that's just one farmer's story, mm. you know, from someone mm. having to make decisions. The ability to connect that one farmer's story to a group or a type, which can then connect to a wider census mm -hmm. and then to a national or regional census, mm -hmm. gives the power of those stories a connection to generalizable states. And mm -hmm. for me, I think that's a really valuable part mm -hmm. that, or contribution that we're making. Uh, and it's where my learning around Activity mm -hmm. 3A is focusing mm -hmm. at the moment. Interesting. And what are you planning for the next 12 months? Yeah, data collection. Mm -hmm. So um, we're putting the final touches on the method um, and how we build up that, that comprehensive list of relations. That's going to start in the next few weeks. It'll probably take us a month or six weeks to get that finalized definitive list because we're going to do it to saturation, which means we keep asking different farmers about the relations until we don't hear anything new. We really want to make sure that that's a, as comprehensive a list as possible. Mm -hmm. And you'll never get a perfect list. There will always be something we miss, but we're going to get it as, as strong as possible. And even as an output in itself, I think that's really useful. Like, what are the relations that farmers list about their lives? Because the assemblage literature, the network literature and research always struggles to find its boundaries. Mm -hmm. Because in many ways, everything's important. Everything's related in some way. You can trace a network to infinity. And so as mm. researchers, at some point, we have to put a boundary on it. Mm. And we know that those are artificial and we know that we miss something as a result of it. But if we use farmers talking about their own lives as the boundary that we put on this relational understanding, I think that's rigorous and justifiable. And I think really worthwhile to have farmers themselves tell us what's important about their lives and to then subsequently have the discussion about where they'd like to see change. Hmm. Great. And what are you hoping to find out? Whew. I guess there's different facets, right? So for me in activity six, our big question is like, how do we help these farmers? Or what, mm. what help do they want? And can yeah. we help link them with that sort of help? And so if this relational sort of discussion allows us to go, hey, this group of farmers wants that kind of help, Oh, that would make mm. that would make the project's life a lot easier because we can mm -hmm. then proceed to identifying how that sort of support might be delivered or is currently being delivered and we can kind of partner with an organization providing that support. Mm. That's very 
project centered and, and mm -hmm. kind of um, pragmatic on, on, on our side of really making sure that the project is delivering what it promised. But for me, that's where it is. It's mm -hmm. like activity three really opens our eyes to what farmers say they want. Oftentimes in the research it shows farmers will tell you what they think you want to hear. Mm. Right? Mm. And that's a, a very realistic and rational approach. Someone comes in, you know, they're a foreigner, they've got resources, and they ask you what you want, you kind of gauge that based on what you think they can offer and what you mm. think is possible. And that's a fantastic coping mechanism. But for us, we're kind mm. of like, geez, we'd really like to know things that are maybe unexpected. So oftentimes when a farmer is not gaming the system, but trying to tell you what you want, they'll limit themselves to agricultural stuff mm. because they go, oh, I'm a farmer and these guys are agricultural researchers or whatnot. Mm. And we'd really very much not want that. We'd prefer to hear if there's a non-farming support that might actually benefit the household even more than direct mm. help on a kind of classic farming intervention mm. sense. Mm. And so I hope that the relational account by painting this huge network it facilitates or increases the willingness of farmers to point to something kind of unrelated mm. to farming, but definitely beneficial to the farming household. And so that's mm. where I, I really hope Activity 3A will um, mm. contribute. Mm. Interesting. Thank you so much for your time today, Brian. I yeah, loved it. Thanks.